You're listening to the Fuck Down Nation Network. Hey, everybody. This episode of Robert Land has been brought to you by the Big Bro, Little Bro podcast, where the big bro gives advice to his little bro. As your big bro, I'm going to help you get laid with these awesome pickup lines. Thanks, big bro. Like, if you see her at a club or something like that, you can go up to her and be like, hey, like, your friends might be hotter than you, but I like a woman because of what she has up here. You're so cool. Welcome to Robert Land. That's right, your favorite not safe for work comedy theme park podcast. And I'm your host, Robert Thompson, comedian, musician, the guy from Fresno originally, but then moved to Chino <laughs> later, did. Uh, and theme, theme park parkologist, all I do. do. What is up, everybody? How, How y'all doing? doing? Boy, <laughs> I'm excited. This is our uh, season finale. Wow. We did 84. Five episodes. Wow, and I came in at like here. episode 69. Yeah, dude. Dude, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we're joined by a fellow theme park aficionado, former uh, Disneyland employee, uh, comedian Eric Escobar. Welcome to the show, man. Hello, I'm here. Not <laughs> safe for work, you doo-doo heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get dirty and I'm, mean. I like it, dude. I like oh, it. We do man. have a simp audience that we're trying to play to, too. Yeah, Our uh, producer pussies. tells us so. You know, usually we have uh, like a guy in a gimp mask um, with Mickey ears and we beat him with the churro. <laughs> no, Jeez Louise. No. What did I sign up for? Uh, I don't uh, know. Yeah. If, this is actually, just be uh, thankful there's no erotic fan fiction today. Great. I'm yeah. going to walk out of here bruised and covered with cinnamon sugar and that's <laughs> totally. just how I like it. But Good. We're glad to have you and uh, this is exciting. Uh, before we get to uh, our uh, guest, we're going to go to my favorite segment, your favorite segment, a theme park minute with Zach Hillman. Enjoy. Enjoy. This is Theme Park Minute with Zach Hillman. Seems that not even making a turtle wrap could help Vanilla Ice's standing with PETA. Ice drew the ire of the animal rights activist when he agreed to play a concert at SeaWorld in San Antonio last weekend. This is the first concert in SeaWorld's Electric Ocean series, which features other washed up acts like Jesse McCartney, 38 Special, and Air Supply. Truly a lineup that we can all agree really blows holes. I mean, what's the porpoise? PETA protested ICE's concert with signs that say, Warning, Vanilla Ice supports dolphin sexual abuse. To which Vanilla Ice replied, Don't warn the dolphins. All right. Wow. What's up, what a great segment. Yeah, I learned so much. That was wonderful. Dude, Zach is the <laughs> Magical. Man. Oh, man. yeah. He's the hill man. We're going to yeah. change that. the name of that segment, I think, season two, called The Zach Attack. Oh, I like Ooh, that. Yeah. Very, that was the uh, the band in Saved by the Bell. Was it really? Was yeah. It? Lisa played bass. Oh, Zach shit. played guitar and sang. AC on the drums. Dude. Kelly Kapowski on vocals. Elizabeth Berkeley slash Jessica Spano. Jesse Spano. She was, I think she was managing. I think she was. We, so, all, we all have a role. And no, what yeah. was Screech? Was he like the dancer? R. Keyboards. Of course. Keyboards. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was the keyboard. Well, he's, yeah. he's dead now. Yeah, Dustin Diamond. No. <laughs> No, Wait, yeah. is he dead? He died. I think yeah. He did, dude, oh my lord! I think I, think I always the, related to him the most. His character. Isn't that funny? How like yeah. sometimes the nerdiest characters. I was watching Ladybugs the other day, which doesn't age well at all. But I was, at first I thought you were talking about the actual bug. I'm no, like, no, the, the, the Rodney Dangerfield. Nice afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's like this nerdy ass character, like this like chubby girl who's like, I'm a loser because I'm chubby and I wear glasses. And I'm like, that was the only character in the whole fucking movie that I related to was that one. It's it's always so strange, like the like Dustin Diamond or, or Screech. Yeah, was I the love guy. Dustin Diamond. Yeah, he was also in Purple People Eater, the uh, the the old the classic deep cut with uh, uh, another guy who just passed away from Deliverance. Uh, I forget his name. He's uh, Lotso Huggin' Bear in the uh, d- Pixar. Oh, Toy in Story. Toy Story. Yeah, but like it was a hilarious just. When he I, died? <laughs> it was the funniest part. No. He's the worst. Yes, yes, I'm having we're, a great time. Yes. This is we're <laughs> going to oh, just wait. No, um. I only remember Dustin Diamond from his uh, adult film. Remember he had a Oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't he have like a. There was like a controversy about him having a stunt dick and shit in that movie. Did he really? Uh, I I don't know. I never saw it, but apparently he did. Why is it black? I don't know. (laughs) This is. uh... (laughs) Fucking awesome. (laughs) But I mean, uh, uh, speaking of Dustin Diamond's penis, you were an employee at uh, Disneyland. Right? Yes, yes. Um, I worked on Dustin Diamond's penis. My favorite <laughs> yeah, ride. Uh, long line. Long line. 
um, of cocaine for him. Yes. I feel uh-huh. like uh, my Disney days are looked back upon with such just fondness and excitement. Yeah. It was my first job ever. Um, I worked in Outdoor Ventures, um, also known as Outdoor Vending, which is also known as the carts, where I sold popcorn and churros and $40 waters. It was really <laughs> wonderful. And then um, I left that, and then in 2017, I want to say, um, I went back, worked in attractions on Toy Story Mania. Oh, great man. ride. Wonderful. Yeah. Amazing. I think it's it was a great, cool ride, but after Spider-Man came out, mm. or is coming out right now, yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to lose a little bit of street cred. Because isn't it like basically a, the same ride? Spider-Man apparently is like super Toy Story Mania, where there's no guns, you just mm-hmm. flick your hands, and yeah, they yeah. Like can see where everything is. Yeah. yeah. What a thrill. Can't so wait I, to check it out. I got a question about you working in outdoor dining. Yes. So there was, a, there was one day at Disneyland where um, one of the people that was working one of the carts gave me free shit yes for no reason <laughs> uh, at least i didn't think it was uh, maybe i was being nice i don't i have no idea but like he just gave me free stuff and he was like here you go man it's on me whoa yeah and i, I was wondering is there like a certain allotment of like that that happens at disneyland i i i, I thought like maybe this guy gets like has a credit of like 50 bucks that he can just kind of dole out randomly dole to, whip out there you go yeah, yeah. <laughs> to like the randoms that come through the the line not not when i was working there okay. but given this was you know oh geez 15 years ago yeah give or take because when i was there it was wild let's just say your shift was from four to ten you're not like on a cart at four going out doing it from like four to five or four to five thirty you were doing uh, inventory mm. so you would count every cup on your cart every ice cream on your cart mm-hmm. and then at the end you would count it again and it was this giant thing where you had to make sure you weren't over or under okay so it was a very like they knew where every dollar was going interesting which of course they would they're dis- oh yeah for sure of course yeah. wow that makes it even stranger that the guy hooked me up like that maybe he was just like you know what I'm gonna get fired anytime soon uh, we're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna hook up this nice gentleman with he all was the cool churros. as fuck I maybe could, he I just saw that uh, pay it forward film you know so, yeah something where they pay he was paying it forward and giving you free stuff yeah they probably took him to the back and like I don't know like beat him up and it's <laughs> yeah, all your fault yeah. now is he one of the, like, the haunting you. ghosts he, he, now, he's 1000 yeah, now yeah. Well, I, remember, yeah. I actually remember his name his name was Mark his name was Mark yeah his oh name hi Mark. Mark yeah hello yeah. fucking A yeah, Mark Davis. Uh, yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. fun stuff. Uh, my, my brain just spews out a Disney facts there because I love Disney, man. So the fact that you were there, uh, there's so many questions that come to mind. Uh, did, did you work there? Wait, what, what time period was this? Was what I worked there in 2006 and then again around 2017, I want to say. Oh, okay. Give or take. What were the differences between working there during the – because that was – was 2006 the end of the Eisner era? It was like the transition, right? I was Iger. working there. I want to say Bob Iger was just coming in, I think. Just coming in. But it was also the 50th. Oh, okay. Um, so it was kind of crazy because when I originally worked there, it was very all about the 50th and very <laughs> themed. And like, just, whoa! And then the latter time I worked there, it was more just like, hey, we're just, we're just hanging out. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. Yeah. Was there any difference between, like, the administrator or the, the, like, the regime that was there in 2005 as opposed to 2017? Um, I feel like it's a little hard to tell just because I was in foods sure. and then I was in attractions. Oh, yeah, right. So I was kind of in two different worlds. Mm-hmm. But um, to be honest, I didn't feel too much difference. Mm-hmm. I think I may have been a little more just excited about it when I was in high school just because I was such a big Disney fan and I was a kid and I was like, this is great. Um, and it was my first job. Yeah. So I didn't really compare it to any other gig. Yeah. But it was they've always been super organized. They've mm-hmm. always been super big on like not only learning your role and let's make sure you are confident in your role before you get out there, but also like like Disney. You know, they have mm-hmm. traditions, which is this great class in the Disney history and why we do things and they're they really cover all bases. Yeah. And they always have and it's it's a great part of the company, but it's also very like Structured, mm-hmm. you know what I yeah. mean. It's like you can't just like show up late and be be okay. It's like yeah. you know you're getting points or whatever. You know that reminds me of. I have only had one job where they were big on the culture, and this is very strange. The one you job at uh, Scientology. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, the, my first job was at KFC of all places, oh. and there was the first week, not even the first week, but the first few days that you were there. They like hammered in like the tradition of the colonel, like racism and oh, you right. know, homophobia yeah. and you know. No. The whole, um, but they really hammered through, cool. like, like who the colonel was and like what he stood for and all this shit. It was fucking awesome. And I remember thinking, like, after that indoctrination of like Colonel Sanders, 
that I, I like, was like, wow, I, I really love KFC and I love the Colonel. It was it was like this weird brainwashing, but I fucking loved it. Like I loved working at KFC. It was very strange. I think the big difference is with Disney, you get a lot of people who are Disney fans. Sure. They like it. They've grown up with it. They move from far away because they've been a Disney fan their whole life. Yeah. Like, Let me do the college program. Let me get a job here. And they're already so invested and they work there. Mm-hmm. And you're around all these people with a similar passion and excitement. I don't know how many people are like, you know what? What's my thing? Yeah. Fried, Fried chicken. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's me. fucking it. I that love was KFC. <laughs> I think this is I'm my a, life. I'm like, a huge fan of KFC. It's I want to sign is. people in. Where are yeah. my guest passes Dude, yeah. for yeah. Uh, yeah. some grits? Donuts, too. I would, if I was working for a donut factory, I would definitely be just as fucking passionate about that as well. Well, this is oh, funny, man. and I'm glad you brought that up because I have a really funny anecdote. Uh, it's uh, going to get a little little silly here, but uh, where, where I grew up in, in Chino Hills, there was a KFC. Let's not brag. All right. Okay. Let's not brag. <laughs> where I grew up in Beverly Hills no, of the Inland Empire. No, it was... You know, it's a it's a hodgepodge of very bizarre people. You know, uh, we moved there right when it was kind of like forming into like a city, and uh, KFC was one of the only places. And there was like this rumor that uh, there was a bucket at KFC that the employees would all take turns like shitting and coming <laughs> in to oh my di- lord to dip your your food into <laughs> if they didn't like it. But I heard it from like numerous people. I'm like, what is it really like when you get hired on? Like, we're great. You're part of the team, but you need to. If you're really a part of the team, you gotta, uh, you oh know, my God. You gotta come shit into in the this bucket. bucket. I think that is just the culture that you were talking about earlier. You know what I mean? Do you really like this place? Well, how much do you like? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, come yeah, in this right. bucket is now. Uh, talk or? about Jack in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> yes. It's a bucket. It was. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there was nothing like that. Uh, there was. There's three things that really stick out about working at KFC. Thing number one, <laughs> cleanliness. Thing number two. They allowed us to smoke cigarettes all over the place in there. Oh my god! Thing number three, <laughs> um, one of the guys was selling drugs out of there. Oh my, well, which was great. To be fair, their mashed potatoes is my favorite drug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yes. great, great whips, yeah. good mash. We called oh, this guy yeah. Doctor Dreyer because he was like, he was like a white dude that like was totally like he embodied hip hop culture. So he and was so, like Dr. Dre, but yeah, he, his last name was Dreyer. So it was like, oh, the, it was just like, oh, boom, Dr. Dreyer. Perfect. Awesome. But he always sold good weed. And the way he would sell weed was he would take two cups, a big cup and a small cup. So you take the big cup and you would put your weed at the bottom of the, of the a big cup. And then he would put the small cup on top of it and be like, here's your drink. Oh, yeah. smart. And I don't know, somewhere. Talk up, about high C. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> So, bring it yeah. back, McDonald's. Bring yeah. it back. <laughs> bring it back. That's yes. right. They used to have high C there. Well, that was the fucking shit. You know what a thrill is? So I'm a comic. I go on the road a bunch, eat a lot of McDonald's, eat a lot mm-hmm. of fast food. California doesn't have icy orange, but other states dude. still have high C orange. What the yeah. fuck? Why don't we have it? I don't know, dude. There's a we- that and like Mr. Pib. Big Mr. You Pib. You can get thing. like Pib bottles. Extra? Oh. Yeah. So let's just talk about so. You are a, th- not only are you a former Disneyland employee, cast but member. Cast member. Get it yeah. right. Please yeah. don't sue us, yeah. Disney, because you have way better lawyers than us. Evan, be our lawyer. Represent yeah. us. He's over the cast, cast man over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, but you are, you also, you were talking about traveling as a stand up, but you're also talking, you're a big fan of theme parks in general. Huge fan. All right. Huge fan, which is uh, great when you're a stand up comic making $100 a weekend. It really is the, uh, the perfect thing to be a fan of. Um, yeah, everywhere I go, uh, I definitely try to hit up all the big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually a pass holder at Universal Orlando. Okay, cool. Dude, that's amazing. I, I bought yeah. like a buy two day, get two day ticket during COVID when it was like really cheap, and it was like a dollar more to upgrade. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll be back. It'll be fine. So um, Universal Orlando is actually <sighs> big Disney fan. Always been a big Disney fan. Probably one of my favorite experiences ever. That Nile's Adventure, incredible. Um, recently went to Busch Gardens over in Williamsburg. I believe mm-hmm. that's Virginia, New Hampshire, around there. No, I think it's Virginia. I think it's Virginia, right? It's uh, I don't know. It's somewhere they had a lot of fried chicken. Sticky. I remember it was great. Yeah. Very sticky. <laughs> yeah. uh, went to Cedar Point recently. Uh, not a big roller coaster person mm-hmm. previously. Went to Cedar Point. Rode. Forgot the name of it. It's the biggest steel coaster in America. And that ride made me feel like God. Mm. So now steel. I love coasters. <laughs> love it. Millennium Force. It was called oh, Millennium I've Force. Heard of that. Yeah. Oh my lord! I wow. felt just. I felt so powerful. <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah, big, uh, big Universal fan. Big, uh, 
big Knotts fan. Mm-hmm. We were talking about Knotts earlier. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pre-podcast. We talked yeah. about boysenberry pie. Yes, boysenberry's a legend. Legendary. Uh, it's funny because now they have, like, a lot of fanfare. Like, I, I do appreciate that they're bringing, like, you know, they have, like, photo ops for, like, Kingdom of the Fucking Dinosaurs. Yes. They got a classic uh, ride. soapbox racers, you know, all that stuff. But, like, I was there recently, uh, by the way, at Knott's Prairie Farm. You're bringing this and, up. Yeah. I, I, oh, I wow. You're, to you're, talk about it. You know, it's funny because when it first happened, you were like, I don't want to talk about it. No, I it was. But you, you flipped on it. Well, because, like, theme parks are my happy place, you know? Yeah, um, man. Um, and uh, so, I, you know, to, to witness that was, it was a total, uh, like, you know, shake, shake your Mind world fuck. up. Yeah, it was a trippy, surreal moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about the recent shooting yeah. that happened close to the park. I heard a lot of feedback online on Twitter and places where everyone was like, the way Knotts handled the situation was pretty good. Like, considering, like, it's not, you know, a thing that they're, they they plan for it, but it doesn't happen all the time. You know what I mean? They, they train someone. How did you feel they handled it? Do you feel like it was pretty good? Or do you feel like, oh, it could have been better? Well, I, I felt safe, not safe? It, 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 it um, I, you know, from what I saw, so I was getting, um, you know, I thought I was getting a boysenberry pie, not like, uh, you know, shot. Uh, so I didn't yeah. know what this happened or almost shot, whatever. But it was, uh, I felt like the employees, from what I know and from what I heard from everyone else's like account is like they were just as terrified. Uh, How could you and not it was be? Yeah. it was it was very uh, I mean I did see a lot of employees like helping people like guide people and stuff. So they did handle in that respect because no one anticipates this. Especially because yeah. Knotts is like you know, it, it's if there's gonna be a terrorist attack, yeah. hit Disney. I know. All right, right? why are you yeah, hitting yeah, the yeah, second know, tier yeah. park over yeah. here in Buena Park? Yeah, like, it's odd because it's like the neighborhood. It's like the big neighborhood theme park. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, I I was told I grew up not not in such a big. I was such a big affinity for it. So to like see that was turned my yeah fucking brain inside out. It was it was completely bizarre. Um, but I think now they will handle it better if that happens again. I hope to God. I it hope never it doesn't again. anywhere. Yeah, anywhere uh, ever. Maybe like a dog fighting. Ring I mean, dude, headquarters. The, it, <laughs> those who aren't familiar with the neighborhood around Knotts, I mean, it's it's not a great neighborhood whatsoever. It's Knotts. Okay. Yeah, straight up, dude. Yeah. It's fucking you know. Uh, the just, happiness ends right around uh, pirate. It's adventure and yeah. it goes to about Portillo's. That is your yeah. safe zone. I'm yeah, like, totally. I love Portillo's, man. Big I, fan, yeah. big combo fan. Yeah. When they when they had that when they opened when they closed off that one um, street that goes through in the middle by the, the middle. TGI Fridays. It was yeah. all like, yeah. tables yeah. and Mrs. stuff. Not, when there's all that tables and stuff, I thought, oh my god, I hope they keep it this way. They really should bring it back and just kind. Of, I have a feeling that in in the in time they're gonna take that whole area because this happened. And they're just gonna wall it off. Fuck it, and just make Word. it a, a really all-encompassing. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna have to like talk to Buena Park about it. Well, but. it's almost like a, a smaller version of like Downtown Disney or City Walk. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. And Downtown Disney and City Walk, there is like like you have to get you know, uh, cert not searched, but like you gotta check detected, in basically. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like there is kind of like a protocol where mm-hmm. you're outside, boom, you're inside, yeah. even though you're not in the park. Yeah. But Knotts has always been pretty open. Oh, you know absolutely. What I mean? yeah. You drive yeah. down that street or Beach Boulevard, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you're you're in there. Yeah. Because yeah, Downtown um, Disney, like you said. Just to get in it, there's like a cavity. It's a process. Search. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. like they get those guys, those hats. They're real. They're real uh, detailed. Uh, but yeah. no, it, it is. Um, you know, you've got like that. Is it beach right there? Yeah, it's beach. Like it's just beach totally exposed. Hard. You know, everyone, and it's exciting. You're like, oh, there's everyone walking to knots. It feels good. But um, you know, unfortunately, so what had happened is two people were were shot, and it was a drive by. But when it had happened. No one knew what had happened. No one knew what was going on other than Where people was being this? shot. So exactly. It I want to say, was it on beach? It was, yeah, it was like right outside the walls. So it was people that were at Like Knott's. by like Claim Jumper? Pro- um, yeah, like a, it was, I actually don't know the exact, I know it was in front. So um, I, I'd assume by there. To be yeah. honest, I more just wanted to shout out Claim Jumper. Okay. Yeah. Great <laughs> salads, great <laughs> yeah. desserts, big fan. They need help too. Let's bring. Let's <laughs> keep claim jump. Let's be honest. I don't know anyone hitting up Claim Jumper right now. We're I mean, post COVID. Bring back the salad bar, yeah, please. Exactly. It was a great salad bar. Wonderful blue cheese. Yeah. I believe it's made in house, as in house as a corporate could do. Oh, totally, <laughs> dude. Yeah. It, I, uh, you know, my my whole thing is. I had no anticipation, of course, and I remember um, I had taken an edible of marijuana. Uh, and You're not was... allowed to say that on the podcast, by the way. You're not. Oh, really? Yeah, no. You can't say. You can't oh. say marijuana or Disneyland. 
Oh, okay. Well, I. But you um, can say black tar heroin. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, let's yeah, say yeah, you got an yeah, edible yeah. of black tar heroin. Yeah, I was doing some uh, real, real. Uh, uh, crank. You, yeah, could say, crank. you could say crystal meth, too. He wasn't yeah. even there, the shooting happened. No, no, he no. just had a great I'm edible. A Jupiter. And yeah, just it was imagine great. Imagine this everything. Um, God, that really doesn't. But having an edible. Y your experiences on edibles and my experiences on edibles are completely different. I mean, I take an edible and it's like, that's just like a ticket to a panic attack. Well, I was having, that's the funny thing is, um, you know, I was enjoying myself because I'm like, oh, there's Berry Tales merch. There's the Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. I was like super stoked and I was in a, such a happy place, which is where you want to be, you know, on an edible. But like right when I realized that what was going on, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I had just had a panic attack trying to decide what, uh, you know, churro to buy, let alone. To uh, be fair, sober or not sober, I've gone through the same. Panic. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to give you panic yeah. either way. But I remember seeing a woman who like looked really pissed, and and I I noticed like some kids were kind of like ran ran uh, by her, and I think they pushed her. So I just saw like her reaction to her being pushed. So she was kind of like uh, and staring at them, and then another person was running by and bumped into her so she looked like extra pissed but then i realized she was like looking outside for a while i'm like man why is she like she want to she's gonna throw down dude she's angry but then uh someone else was like oh there's a baby crying so i'm like maybe there was a kid fell or something and yeah. they're rushing to their kid right and then all of a sudden as soon as i like my brain is processing oh you know, someone probably fell over i like look and there's like a group of people running at me and this little girl is like there's a guy with a gun and he's shooting people and so my stomach just like that movie theater noise that they that's, use in every avengers the yeah yeah i felt that immediately that's horrifying. yeah i it was it I'm was, glad you're still alive. Thank you, man. I well, put I mean, that out there. Yeah, and really then I happy. heard gunshots immediately after. So I was like, dude, this is unbelievable. Like, I wanted just some boysenberry pie. You know, I know I was going to die. No, thank you. I, it's my way of dealing with it, bad puns. Uh, but it was truly, like, terrifying because no one knew what had happened. So it was, like, chaotic. People were trampling <sighs> each other. There was, like, kids split horrifying. up from their families. It was a nightmare. And, like, if you were there, you could... You could really uh, attest to how like frightening it was because I heard multiple shots right wow. after, and so I was like, "Dude, am I? Is this like what's going on here? Is this like a, a terrorist attack? Is it a, a mass shooter?" My heart goes out to you and all those people who were there, especially the victims. Like that's and it was a kid. It was horrible. an innocent kid that like Whoa, it was is a that kid, who got shot. Yeah, it was a kid, and it, he got shot in the shoulder. Think I mean, as awful as it is, thank God it was hopefully a place where I mean, he, no one died, but like. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's awful. But he got shot in the shoulder. And there's a footage. There's a video footage of it. Um, oh, and yeah, it, it was crazy because he's like, oh, um, you know, she's like, oh, my, my mom and dad aren't gonna let me hang out with you guys again. So obviously, it's like an innocent kid. It's not like because they were saying it was like a gang-related shooting. And I'm like, the kid that got shot had nothing to do with gangs, yeah. you know? Like, so it it could have been. Who knows? Regardless, it's awful. It happened because it sent a. Uh, panic wave through the whole park yeah people were hopping the fences i mean it's too bad especially with the world like just opening up yeah and it's a happy place for families so it was truly like terrifying i mean i think that they should definitely stray away from the drive-by theme at scary farm this year <laughs> might be a little t distasteful welcome to the happiest podcast on earth <laughs> i know right <laughs> really right. Just, I, oh, I, I just felt like addressing it i know we never get like that heavy on the show but i i'm welcome great the finale yeah right yes. on a good yeah. note that's yeah. just yeah. Like, cheerful like, you're right eric i don't know man so any story did it have you ever farted at disneyland how's that going uh, uh it's when great <laughs> actually i have a, a, a knots facts can i share a yeah, knots let's, facts yeah let's share it. i think Nuts. We all may be in the loop, but you know where the boysenberry name came from? No. no. So, uh, from what I understand, um, so obviously uh, Knott's was a berry farm, yeah. and then the depression hit, and uh, Cordelia Knott started selling her fried chicken on her wedding china in their tea room, could only do one family at a time, and the chicken was so popular, and people wanted to eat in this tea room so much, they would wait hours, like hours and hours and hours. So uh, Walter Knott, her husband, he actually was like, all right, cool, well, if people are waiting hours, let's let's do some attractions, you know what I mean? Let's throw in a ghost town, let's throw in a Liberty Bell, and that was kind of like the beginning of Knott's Berry Farm. Just yeah. creating a theme park for people who are waiting in line for food, wow. which I think is hilarious. That's amazing. Um, and he invented uh, the boysenberry, which 
I believe is a Blackberry and Loganberry crossover. I might be wrong on that. Um, but when he was trying to bring in all these things for the theme park, he needed money and he needed financing. So his best friend, Rudolph Boysen, actually came wow. in and helped him out, gave him some money to help him build these little attractions. And he was like, thank you for helping me out. I'm going to name my new berry creation after you. Whoa, crazy. That's I had crazy. no idea. I love yeah. it. And look what he's fucking built off of that. Look at what he's built. Look at what Cedar Fair is built off yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, seriously. So you know that, you know, at one point in time, Disney, when it was up for sale, and Disney offered to buy it. They were gonna. They were gonna buy it from the Knotts family. No way. I didn't and, hear about this. Oh, you never. Okay. No. So, did you this, know is, this? this had to have been what early two thousands. Yeah, early two thousands. When okay. when Cedar Fair bought them. Jeez so Liz. Disney wanted to buy it, and I think they wanted to do some kind of like. I don't know. I don't know. But something like that. well, no, not really. They wanted to keep it Knotts Berry Farm, oh. and apparently they they said to the Knotts family that we're gonna double down. On the whole, not very KFC farm. double down. Exactly, the double double on stack, the, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. Delicious, you know, filled yeah. with cigarettes and weed. <laughs> yes, Get a large were, drink. You know, it's like it's not it's Buena Park. I mean, come on. Um, but they were going to double down, and they were really going to you know go with Knott's Berry Farm, and they wanted to add on to the Liberty Bell area and all that. Like, or not the Liberty Bell, the other side. Yeah, the like other side. The, yeah, they wanted to fucking. They wanted to go for it, and. That's awesome. um, the Knotts family just said, we would rather fucking die than sell to Disney. And so that's why Cedar Fair was the Isn't people that crazy? took it over. Yeah. What's wild is I feel like Disney has such a reputation of like class and top tier entertainment mm-hmm. and it's great, but no one trusts them. You no. know what I mean? Yeah. Like even um, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like oh, and, Disney and, was originally supposed to get that. And then right. she was like, I don't, yeah. you're going to mess it up. Well, it's and, universal. And, yeah. and I believe that they would have. Yeah. You know, I, they would have Disney it. They, yeah. Well, there just would have been, they would have taken people out of the fucking, I mean, Harry Potter land really pushed the envelope of like an immersive experience So good. where, where like, I think that if it went to Disney, Disney would have done shit. Like they would have had like Mickey Mouse dressed up as Harry Potter and they would have sold yeah. it in stores. And, it would have been like, like a very, like Hogwarts would have been kind of like this weird, like Disney-esque, like, I, oh, yeah. Goofy is looking <laughs> yeah. like Snape. All right. Yeah. This is very, uh, <laughs> I really think that, especially with the merchandising in the park i think yes. they would have went that direction hardcore and i think that when because harry potter world was such a success that influenced star wars land but i think that even disney couldn't keep their fucking shit paws off of the you know the merchandising yeah. and did the same bullshit not that i've been i haven't even been to star wars land yet but there's like so many stuffed animals which i it's like give me a fucking break like who buys these fucking plushes yeah but there's like so many stuffed animals in Star Wars land, and it's like, oh, come on, like, no, I, well, at the end of the day, you know, they're a business, and I get it, it's but cheap. it's like, you're, their margins you're a little are obvious right now, right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean, I yeah, gotta yeah, see yeah. through what you're doing for yeah, yeah. you haven't been to Star Wars land? No, man, Galaxy's I haven't been, Edge. Galaxy's Batu. Edge, yeah. Yeah. Batu, yeah, Batu, great, yeah, um, been. Rise of the Resistance is not my favorite ride I've been on, but it hands down is the best ride I've been on. What's your favorite ride you've ever been on? Oh my lord. That exists or doesn't exist? It doesn't matter. You know what? This is uh, this is a weird one. Huge fan of Men in Black at mm. Universal Orlando. It is it is Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters times a billion. Sick. And um, I'm a... Here's the weird thing. I love a good cue. Mm-hmm. Really, really appreciate a good line. Really yeah. appreciate a good cue. And something that Universal does really well are yep. pre-shows. Okay. And this pre-show, I don't want to give away too much. Nah, you'll look it up on YouTube. The pre-show, wait, are we still? Okay, we're good. I thought it was off, but I think it's just blinking. Um, the pre-show for Men in Black is, it's like the World's Fair, and you go into this building, and it's called the Universe in You. And there's this guy comes in, he's like, oh, we're going to talk about space, and how there's no aliens in space, and we're the only ones here, and the universe, we're all alone. And then, like, an alarm goes off, and then out of nowhere, he's wearing the Men in Black glasses, an elevator opens up, and he's like, just kidding, we're in the Men in Black headquarters, we gotta go, there's something going on. And you bust in, and you go through the elevator. It's an amazing ride. Fuck yeah. So and cool. I'm a big fan of any, like, immersive is what I love. Is like, that Islands me. of Adventure or in the... That's a universal proper. Universal oh, wow. proper. Okay. Right between Simpsons and what used to be Fear Factor. What's up, Joe Rogan? How you doing? <laughs> that's, so, that's so great, man. I, uh, I've i always wanted to go to Universal Orlando. I've been to Disney World, but not to, uh, yeah, Disney World or Orlando. But Islands of Adventure for a long time was Excellent. like... 
on the top. It was like always topped all these lists of best theme park. It, it and, really is. And I love that they had like, dude, where the where are you going to find a place with like a Popeye themed ride? Like, where are yeah. you going to, you know? Um, Isn't there a Sinbad ride there too? Um, House oh guest? God, I hope there is. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. be so yeah, excited. Yeah. Fucking awesome. I think that's in D- uh, Disney, uh, Tokyo Disney okay. Sea. Okay, all right. Sinbad ride. Gotcha. But, they uh, also have a hella great Pirates of the Caribbean. Have you seen those videos? Oh, yeah, it's insane. They're pirates. Oh, you go, right. like, underwater at one point. Yeah. yeah. What the hell? Yeah, You yeah, go yeah. underwater. <laughs> you know yeah. what we have here? We have three weird Johnny Depp animatronics. <laughs> that is our highlight. You uh, go uh, underwater uh, over yeah. in Disney Sea. Boy, oh, boy. Yeah. I, it, I think it's a, that's at Shanghai. Is it is the underwater? Yeah, the Shanghai. underwater part where it oh, like wiggles you around and does some weird shit. Whatever it is, yeah, go Asia. Go <laughs> Asia. They're USA. We just don't have the Asia. fucking space over here. We don't. No, it, when they bought Disneyland, they're like, tons of space. Yeah. And it's like, that got filled out real quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then even Universal, it's a studio. Yeah. It's a movie studio. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have just, What are we going to do? And they're getting... Yeah. And they're, they're, Cutting studios to make more room for the parks. Nintendo Land. Yeah, Nintendo they like, cut out Land. a studio yeah. for that. Um, Are they getting rid of the Mummy for that? I don't know. I don't think I, so. It's a whole new. It's right behind Jurassic Park, and it's a whole new area. Yeah. Oh. So nothing's being taked out. But on that topic, like I, I was a big fan of ET growing up. Sure. That turned into um, Mummy. Yeah. I loved the uh, the backdraft thing. Backdraft that turned awesome. into um, ter- uh, not Terminator. Uh, Transformers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they so, just have to redo stuff yeah back to the future yeah thanks simpsons i know at least it's not fast and the furious yeah yeah Yeah, i I would be very upset yeah we did a whole fast nine uh uh, special and we talked about yeah crossover podcast we're talking about it um (laughs) i love the the that that fast nine or fast and the furious attraction is amazing because Vin Diesel at one point is like bigger than the helicopter. That yeah, he like, like comes on. out of the car. Yeah. And- <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a, a thrill ride uh, to say the least. But yeah, Vin I, Diesel. Uh, I, there's a, I think it's a theme park history. They have a video on it, and they say um, this ride, depending on who you talk to, um, either costs way too much or not enough. And I like completely agree. I'm like, this could have been either really great or you spent a lot of money on yeah, dog shit. big Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know they did licensing all those fucking people to to make that ride. Here's another fun fact. Uh, question of the day. What two actors are part of attractions in both Universal and Disney theme parks? Oh, hmm. uh, let me see. What two actors started? What two actors are in rides or attractions in both major theme parks? Oh. Eddie Murphy. It's going to well, actually maybe three. No, no, I don't think there's. Three. I don't think there's any Mulan attractions anywhere. Vin Diesel. Oh, and for, the, oh, for Chris Groot. Pratt. Wow, so that's like a goal. Oh of yeah, mine. okay. If I could be in what's, two. Rides, what's Chris Pratt in Jurassic Universal? World and oh, Guardians? Oh wow, Isn't that okay. Crazy? Yeah, that's cr- that's a and yeah. Groot and. And Fast and the Furious. Yes. <laughs> Said with all yeah, the sadness. Yeah. Dude. Oh, interesting. That's, yeah. that's a pretty good one. Vin Diesel. I don't care if you love him or hate him. You yeah. made it, dude. I mean, <laughs> how could Disneyland you not, and Universal. How could you not love Vin Diesel? I'm sure he's a fucking peach. Yeah. I don't just love him, man. He's family. Did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you see uh, Fast 9? Not yet. Uh, not have have really you seen any of those movies? I did, but when okay. I was a kid, I remember it wasn't the first movie they were like stealing like DVD players. Fuck, I <laughs> yeah, so was like, it we've was, come so far. In it was the like, past yeah, it was like a drag like, racing movie. Now yeah. it's ludicrous in outer space. It's kind of it's, amazing uh, how. Yeah. Talk about an arc. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord. Well, so I haven't been on um, the Fast and the Furious ride in Universal, but it's its own independent. It's not like part yeah. of the tour or anything. In Florida? And they have a pre show yeah. too. Okay. Where I think it's like, like ludicrous. Chris is like, hey, we're going to help you out, help us. And then they have like an actor come in. It's almost like a jungle cruisy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but everything else is the same. Oh, God. It's so fucking yeah. stupid. Dude, I, I, I can't wait to uh, see like where things are going to go with like everything opening up. I mean, there's I, I've been to Disneyland since like the reopening. Yeah. And there's like a certain just like, because especially if you go enough, you get kind of like, oh man, it's going to be a while before there's something new. But just going again after what we went through was like so like rejuvenating. It's like, fuck yeah, I'm here. I'm just curious to see like what they're going to do with some of those uh, spots that like could use a refurbishment like Star Wars Launch Bay in uh, Tomorrowland. Yeah. Where it was like American 
America Sings and you know. It used to be. Uh, I think it still is Jedi Training Academy. Oh no 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 no! You're talking yeah, about like innovations. Yeah, innovations. Innovations. Yeah. 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 And Tom like, I, Morrow. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Robin Williams. I know that's right. He was Tom Morrow. Yeah, yeah dude. And I love the uh, Autopia. A uh, robot that they have from Japan that's absolutely terrifying and adorable at the same time. Osimo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. He yeah. Do, I don't know why he talks like that. I mean, he talks regular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even think he talks. You know what is probably my all-time favorite Disney ride? Rocket rods. Really, oh, yeah. Yeah. dude. And it's heartbreaking they've done nothing with it. Like no, I get it's there. aesthetic. It's cool, but like yeah. there's. Do something. Is it Dude. is the aesthetic of rotting tracks in the middle of Tomorrowland? Is that kind of cool? I, I think it's fucking That's stupid. futuristic. It's a little bit uh zombie apocalypse. The, the sight lines are <laughs> yeah. kind of cool, but man, like Tomorrowland is such a fucking waste of space in so many respects. Mm -hmm. They could really do. Uh, it really needs to be walled off. I have a friend of mine who's a YouTuber who we were at Disneyland in one day, and he says. He goes, as soon as the fucking, as soon as Star Wars lands open, he's like, you watch them wall off Tomorrowland. And I do think that if COVID wouldn't, wouldn't have happened, I do think that they would even, like right now, Tomorrowland would be walled off. Well, what they messed up on is I want to say Euro Disney, Disney Paris, whatever they're calling it now, their Tomorrowland is Discoveryland. Sure. Yeah. Because Discovery makes sense. It's imagination. Right. It's fun. What are we going to discover? Jules Verne. Tomorrowland is... It's such a, step a behind. hard concept because it, it was supposed to be 1986. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Whoa. But they really need they, they, <laughs> if they could if they just went for the future that never happened, yeah. it would it would work fantastic. Well, the I think the Euro Disney one is a little more steampunky. It is. Yeah. And I think that would be cool sure. if we brought that element here. Sure, there'd be a lot of loyalists who are like, oh, well, what about Space Mountain? What about, right. you know, this? But I think there is an element of like, steampunk is more of like a theme you can have fun with. Right. Whereas tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be constantly a chase. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's why I like the idea of the future that either never happened, but you know what's going to happen with it. They're just going to fill it full of IPs and just stuff that they know they can sell merch for you know yeah. that's just really where that's just really where theme parks are really going you know it's it's unfortunate that there's nothing that's that's original is really coming to these parks my, it's all based on something my heartbreaking thing about a lot of new theme parks is I'm a big fan of practical effects right I'm a yeah. big fan of animatronics yeah I'm a me big too. fan of just like anything mm -hmm. real right and it's, it's all screens, screens. Yep. it's nothing lot, but screens. Universal has an issue a lot because mm -hmm. like Disney there's no space still, like what I love about Disneyland or Disney parks is that they'll still wow you with like animatronics even if they have a lot of updated stuff like Rise of Resistance mm -hmm. is like the equivalent of like when Indiana Jones opened it's like that oh, hey, that man. monumental but like yeah. you know I remember being on um, what's the other Galaxy's Edge ride um, uh, Millennium Falcon yeah. and Gas Smugglers yeah, Run Smugglers Run yeah, yeah yeah so that one I love the animatronic of um, oh, whatever the, the, uh, the dude I thought he was an actor dreadlock guy yeah yeah. Whatever, yeah Hondo yeah it's that was totally like mind blowing like this is so fluid how he moves like he, he actually uh, he pinned me against the wall and um, grabbed my balls. It was a very it was a, it was a different experience. I don't think anyone else went through that, but uh, yeah, I mean, I love that Disney still manages to do those things. The Cars ride, all this, they still manage oh, to wow you. Racers, and, racers. Mm -hmm. and Universal, I think, um, you know, they kind of have have ran with like the screens end animatronics a lot like they, Harry but they Potter. just do not have the space over there yeah Universal yeah. Studios is so slammed in it's like they can't that's like what they're forced to do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm you know? with you on that. They're like, the, I love the animatronics. Like, it's very immersive, mm -hmm. and our brains just once you see like a screen, it just takes you out. Like, I think Disney does do the best job at incorporating both. Like, especially when they do like the upgrades, like, yeah. um, like Thunder Mountain, like all the dynamite mm -hmm. that they added. Yeah, like, it's cool. cool when you're going up the hill. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think uh, here's the thing. I don't mind screens if you look at rides like um, Transformers, Spider Man, mm -hmm. um, yeah. things that integrate the mix of like oh is that real or is that a screen because you know there's like so many weird things around. I think that's cool but when you look at like what the subs used to be mm -hmm. and now you look at it now it's like I'm watching a I'm watching a movie. Yeah, yep. They need the doms to come back. There you yes. go. Uh, and the subs. <laughs> yeah. And the subs. But I, 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 I remember when I was a kid, we went into the submarines, and my aunt's like such a claustrophobic uh, Clarissa. <laughs> we were in there. Oh, thank you. And it was terrifying because like she was going crazy. I was like four years old, and I remember seeing the mermaids, and it's all yeah. She was losing her shit. It's still pretty claustrophobic. Yeah. I actually, it's not open right now because of. Uh, 
Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Wait, so, you're saying during COVID they don't want to slam uh, 40 yeah. people inside a uh, box just to breathe the same air? That's yeah, I, I guess not. Uh, it's probably wise, but uh, and then yeah. it's t- it's fuck. It is a sardine can in there. <laughs> it is. You are you are asses to elbows in that fucking thing. If I, there's yeah, I don't know, man. If there's like one ride though that like you wish. Uh, this is kind of putting you on the spot, but like yeah. you wish you could see, like regardless of you know Disney, Universal, your own imagination. Like, is there a ride that you'd really want to see happen? Is there one in your head? To, like, I wish this was real. Like a property where it was like, oh, what can we do with that? Yeah, yeah or anything. Yeah. Any, really, or anything. any kind of ride. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Louise. Um, you know what? I would love to see more walkthroughs. Yeah, I think walkthroughs are cool. I want to say Disney Hong Kong. Had a black cauldron walkthrough for a while. Fucking a, dude. It was like wow. underneath the thing. And oh, I thought yeah. that was a brilliant, or the castle. I thought that was a brilliant concept. Um, so, the haunted mansion was just a building for years. They didn't do yeah. anything with it. It was just there. And originally, it was supposed to be a the walk same through. concept, but it was yeah. a walkthrough where you know there were different effects. You had a host, common jungle cruisy, and for a brief time when they were thinking about that, they wanted every land to have a walkthrough. Mm-hmm. So Adventureland would have kind of like this crazy, like tiki vibe walkthrough. Fantasyland would have like a fun one, um, and you can count the castle as a walkthrough. But I think walkthroughs are a fun idea that haven't been or hasn't been explored as much as they could be. Dude, you're did, right. Did you ever get a chance to do a walkthrough of the haunted mansion? I knew they were doing that with cast members for a long time, and no. yeah, I believe they were. I, I'm I'm not a hundred percent on this, but I'm pretty sure they were letting cast members do a walkthrough. Of the Haunted Mansion Jeez, for a while. I would have loved that. No. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> one thing I've never been able to do that I've always wanted to do, um, Space Mountain Lights On. Yeah. yeah. Never been able to... It's never worked out for me. What's your best What's your best walk-off of any, any ride that you've I, had? Have you had one? I had a good had one any? once. Um, not the best, but the only was one time um, it was raining and I was outside like two boats away from exiting it's a small world okay and we were just stuck in the rain we were just sit and we're like can we just leave we can see it right there and they're like no and eventually we just left ourselves we like got up like Mm -hmm. kind of thing and they're like well i guess we didn't see it yeah yeah (laughs) that's my only walk off story and i was not a fan and that's yours oh uh i had a really good walk off on big thunder once oh yeah it was like i think it was like the first tunnel and it just boop stopped and it took a minute for them to like get us out and I was like oh my god this is so exciting I get a walk off of Big Thunder Yeah. and I, I said to the to the cast member I said oh, I'm so excited and he's like oh man they're really upset right now like they do not want they hate this Yeah. and we walked through the entire fucking thing and I got like I was at the back and I, the guy let me take photos all over the place wow yeah he like stood back did you go and, through like, a portal and went back in time to like the yeah the uh, donkey I got show bus. or whatever they had exactly there. Yeah. yeah it was Didn't it was so right. not a donkey show so oh, they had like walk around it was called the Mesa Nature's Wonderland yeah Mesa Verde it, yeah right? it was like nature the, it was at Nature's Wonderland you have the but there the was different like, yeah there was yeah. different pieces of it but it That's was so cool. fucking That's sick great. That's and one thing that you don't really notice when you're on that ride especially when you're going through tunnels and stuff because of the lighting but there's so many there's so much gum there's a reason you know they don't sell gum at Disneyland but there's so much gum on the fucking ground it, it kind of blows your mind and it's you don't really you don't notice it at all yeah. but there it's it's kind of fucking crazy to see how much is on there so I have I'm gonna show it to the camera hello I have a tattoo right here there it is it's of the Yeti. Whoa! Oh, fuck Expedition yeah, Everest. dude! Yes, sick. Dude. The one that always breaks down, or that now is can't permanently broken. Dead. Yeah, he, just they, the they, disco Yeti. They throw yeah. the yeah. robe on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, look, he's moving. I but every that, every fucking time it broke down, it was a million bucks Jeez. to fix it. It was a million dollar fix every time. Who's the guy, Joe? Joe Rody. Joe Rody. Yeah, he like talks about it. And he's like, we would love to fix it, but it would cost a billion dollars to break through the ride. It's like yeah. he's built inside. Yes. Yeah, because that mountain is like. I mean, I think it's dude, growing sick. up, growing up in you know, d- d- growing up inside of Disneyland, uh, yeah, the, to brag as well. No, I, um, you know, growing up close to Disneyland, like Matterhorn is such a big part of Disneyland. It's like, you know, you see it off the freeway. Like it's yeah. just this 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 classic piece of, of Disneyland history that's still there. It's great, but like. 
Expedition Everest when I finally got to see it in person. It's weird because I remember like when I when I was a kid, I'd hear, "Oh, they don't have Matterhorn at Disney World." I'm like, "How? Mm-hmm. How? Wh- why not?" You know? And then and then finding- they say, "But there's Expedition Everest." That's what always everybody says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I don't give a fuck. I love that ride. It's yeah. well, it's one of my favorites. I have a tattoo. Yeah. It better be. But when you go all the way up before you go backwards, hair ties. Every oh, way, yeah. <laughs> everyone flicks hair, and it's yeah. just, hundreds of them. Yeah, hundred, and no one's gonna go up there and get them. No, it's no. that's frightening. Yeah. Like, well, they might, but oh, <laughs> the originally I think it was supposed to be, um, or there were talks that it was gonna be a Mount Fuji ride oh. uh, in uh, Epcot. Yep. It's supposed to be in Japan, and then I guess they Lauren Hill to... was into the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I think I don't think ja- Japan wanted to fit the bill for yeah, that. Yeah, it was going to be yeah. like super expensive. But do you know why Matterhorn's a thing? Like the original intention, outside of Walt being like, "Oh, Switzerland." Yeah. Um, there used to be just a hill where Matterhorn was, and there were a lot of trees, and it's where all the teenagers would bone. Wow. Oh. So all the teenagers going to Disneyland, of course, they just want to hook up and like mm-hmm. do stuff and do Matter finger and mouth did. stuff. Yeah. They would go on this hill and everyone just like, you know, hook up there. And Disney would constantly have to be like, hey, stop having sex in Disneyland. So they were like, we need to build a ride here. The Matter Horny. The Matter. Ah! <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. You got it. Now End of podcast, mic drop. We're not getting better than this. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. now you got to fucking bathrooms at Disneyland. What the yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob Bob Gurr, man, took advantage of that uh, land there. And really, I don't know, dude. Matterhorn. Bob Gurr? Bob Gurr. Oh, Bob right? Gurr. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was thinking Bob Iger. I was like, Bob, Bob Iger. Iger? I was like, fuck. He's, yeah, he's been around he's for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, no, but I love I love the fact that, like, you know, you, you're – you're a big fan of these theme parks and you've got all this knowledge and it's great because sometimes when we have certain guests on, I, I like, I'll nerd out, but I'm like, oh yeah, we can say anything and you probably have a reference or a point of reference to I'm what we're talking about. I'm having you know? such a great time because I feel like I can't talk to anyone about these things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That sounded yeah, good. Yeah, you totally. know where the Matterhorn in 1947? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's fun. I mean, do you I, do anything on YouTube? Do you do no, like YouTube shit really. with, with, with involving theme parks or whatever? When I, when I go to theme parks, I'm my Instagram stories are five hours long. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, this was seven out of ten. It was great. I love it. You know what I mean? Oh, four out of ten. Hate wooden coasters. Huh. But I want to. I, I just feel like I'm so passionate about it. Like, there are things where, like, if I were to do, like, a food blog. Like, I love food. I could talk about food. I'd be like, oh, let's film this, edit it together, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I would want my theme park stuff to be like, I need to make this great. Right. And I it's don't a lot have of the work. time or the work ethic for you it. see well, yeah, no, what i do is i usually masturbate all day and then i'll write something at the end of the day and it'll be <laughs> just unintelligible and then we do a podcast for a year and a half no but it's dude it's great to have you there's literally like a ton like we, i'd love to have you back yeah we gotta have you back um, we, we, we'll we're, we've this. got we've done yeah. a long this has been an amazing uh a journey for me to do this podcast and have and meet you know great comics that also love theme parks but you know i wanted to before we go i want to talk a little bit about uh, something me and you had talked about before but like those we'll have kitchen. a three-way but we need to make sure we yeah, find okay. the right third you All know right. what i mean well, like, well you right know what third. how you doing man uh, yeah, yeah. You, you ready to get I'm always ready to party Heck but yeah. we need evan to film it that's so matter horny yeah there it's already go. set up i so there was a kitschy Spot in uh, 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 mystery spot that both of you just went to, right? You went no. to mystery spot. I or did you, go to mystery spot. To. It's great. Oh, okay. I love roadside stuff. Yeah, like the mystery spot. There's uh-huh. another one going up to Eureka. Confusion Hill. Confusion Hill. Yeah. I've stopped there at least half a dozen times. Yeah, and I'm always like, why did I pay to go in the upside down room or the slant room again? Yeah, it doesn't I'm fucking not matter. Pictures. It's just great. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff is. Oh, you know what we didn't get to talk about? Meow Wolf. Oh fuck! Yeah, why don't you? Let's let's talk a little we bit about that. We should finish it off on Meow yeah, Wolf because well, yeah, it's fascinating. What, what is Meow Wolf? Um, it's an art installation. It's a Pokemon. Right? I want right? to say it was like a collective of artists. Yeah. They did just talking about immersive experiences. It is immersive. I went to the one in Santa Fe. Had a great time. It's great. It starts out where I almost want, don't want to give too much away, but there's a house. You just see like an old house, and uh, you walk in, and it's normal. And then things start to get weird. And the deeper you get in, the weirder it gets. And there's almost a story to it. So, like, you can just go in and have fun, or you can go in 
check the mailbox, read a letter, says something about a so cool. safe in the dining room. Dude, you but that's the stuff. safe. There's a number on there. You go to the wow. computer, type in a thing, and there's a whole story with it. And they have one that just opened in Vegas. Um, I think it's called uh, Area 15 or Area 51. Um, and then they have another one that they're opening in Colorado. And I am a firm believer in just everything that they're doing. Please sponsor us and give us free tickets. Yeah, is what yeah, we're saying. We'll do a whole episode on you, not just two minutes if you give we, us all We the should stuff. do that. Now, yeah, that would be great to actually elaborate on that stuff because oh. uh, we – yeah, I oh. love the immersive stuff. And I think that's what – like when we talk about like um, you know new things coming to theme parks – those are the things that really make it um, exciting and immersive. Like it's like it takes it back to what it's about, like feeling like you're somewhere else. 100. percent You know, and I feel like, you know, Starbucks the ride will be great, but like having a Beowulf, no, whatever, yeah. <laughs> Mia Wolf, Mia, Mia, Mia Wolf. Maya Angelou Wolf, no, I don't know, whatever. But the coffee bean and tea leaf the ride. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> great. It's wonderful. Yeah, Captain Crunch 3D. I'm all actually that sounds <laughs> fucking. That sounds dope. It smells like Captain Crunch. That'd be I amazing. Um, I, it's like it's a it's a log flume ride where you're covered in milk. It's just <laughs> can, can lactose I, intolerant no. person's nightmare. It's so so we're um so I want to end uh, a, a funny thought. You know, it's been it's been fun doing Robert. It's been Land. a wild we'll be, ride. We'll be back. Um, you know, uh, we'll be back very shortly. Taking a, t- a tiny, uh, you know, five five year break. No, about about a couple weeks. We'll it be seems back. like it, it's what's weird about this break that we're taking. Is it's really not a. It's not break. a break at all. We're doing. And I'm a thinking, whole, yeah, it's just yeah. it's going to be. We're already in the process of like really just getting everything together. Yeah. You know, I feel like when I start when up. I came in here, like I, I wanted to really make sure like you had a really solid thing going. Well, I, I appreciate that, man. So I, yeah, it's, this is so adorable. These two hosts, oh, are man. best in the world. You're you're coming best back, man. We got we got to yeah, have, have you back, man. It's yeah. I. Soon. I'm gonna. You've inspired me to start my own theme park blog where you will be the guest on it. I'd love to. And then we'll all. just it'll just be this part too. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll just yeah. go back and forth. We yeah. really just want to talk and hang out more. Well, yeah. but yeah. comedians yeah. can't hang out unless there's some kind of creative <laughs> element content. No, but you know what though? Like I I feel like in a lot of respects, like the people that I really surround myself with are all fucking people that are are willing to facilitate some vision of something. Amen. You know, I can't really Amen. fuck with anybody that's like on a on a deep level. I'm not really fucking with people that aren't trying to do something. Yeah. You know, it's just like if if you're not trying to do something then why am I why am I wasting my fucking time? And I, I know that I get it. I get it. Yeah, man. It's like, "Oh, I'm just going to have a barbecue and hang out." Like, cool. That sounds great, but like, can we write something? I'm someone who's always wanted to do things where I see a very tangible value on where it's like leading to. Right. Like, oh, if I, you know, do this show, it might lead to, you know, headlining it next time. Right. Or if I go on the road here, I maybe be able to get a guest set or something mm-hmm. or get booked at the club again. Sure. And I feel like it's a mentality that a lot of people have. And when you mess with people who don't have that mentality, it's just harder to connect. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm always have this passion. always want to do something and always want to move forward and do right. stuff. And you can be chill and you can not have that. And that's totally that's fine. fine. That's, that's totally fine. fine. But we're not going to vibe as well as like the person over here right. who's like, boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will have lunch with somebody like that, but it's not going to be something that I can do I'll have all coffee. the time. I'll yeah. Have coffee. It's yeah. I feel coffee, like. bean and tea leaf the ride. So yeah. where can people, where are you existing on social media these days? You can find all my stuff on my Instagram at Eric Escobar. That's Eric with a K. Um, just released a TED Talk. Definitely check that out. It's fun stuff. I have a bunch of shows coming up uh, in D.C., in Royal Oak, Michigan, Whoa. in Arizona. And I should have brought my calendar out, but I'm all around. So if you check out my Instagram, check out all my stuff, uh, you can see where I'm next. I would love to see you. Tell me you met me on this podcast not met me but you found out about me just t- i love the i want to talk about theme parks with people yeah, be one of those people heck yeah and where, can they, where can they find you robert oh uh, you could find me on instagram at robert land podcast uh, on youtube as well uh at robert land podcast and i just realized i talked about a, a shooting with uh the yoda ears <laughs> But I live this is the way. It, so every, this yeah, is this the way, is the way yeah. guys. The way. With the, the, in Robert Land fashion, um, I, I, you know. But th- yeah, I'm excited, guys. Roscoe Soul Train. Where can they find you, my friend? I'm on YouTube. There's links down below to all this stuff, as well as all of Eric's stuff. And mostly, I'm on YouTube and Instagram. I don't really fucking venture too far out of there. Uh, I'm doing TikToks from time to time, but I my I have a TikTok hack oh. that. 
actually works so I don't fucking go on TikTok that often. Oh. And that's the trick with TikTok. If you don't go on TikTok that, TikTok that often, it'll work for you. I like so, it. There you go. I like it. Yeah, I have yeah. a tater tots hack, and it's gravy. <laughs> that's yeah, it. that's Just, good. That's yeah. all. That's the only hack I have. What about Mother cheese curds? Oh my lord! Yeah, like poutine smells reaction. like poutine spirit. Mm. Oh, all man. right. Well, guys, uh, we will see you very soon, and uh, I love you from the bottom of my corazón. And uh, man, Terminé se sentado. So I'm just going to speak Disneyland Spanish right now. Yeah. Um, but guys, Sayonara. That's Japanese. I love you. Life is a wild ride. I'm gonna ride it all night long. All right. <laughs> Uh, dude, thanks a lot, man. Dude, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, man. With this. That was yeah. Boom. awesome. Yeah, thank I you. loved this. Sure. I popular. loved this. We got to get real. We got to do it again, dude. That was so good. I love talking Disney shit, and this was so. Hey guys, thanks for listening or watching the uh, grand season finale of Robert Land. I just wanted to give you a heartfelt thank you for listening or watching the show. Um, you know, it's been 85 83 whatever there's been a lot more than 83 episodes but who's counting it's been uh, an amazing year and a half um doing over a year and a half doing this show um no one's counting no one cares but i just want to say thank you guys uh for everyone who listened uh and, and um watched the show uh, i want to give a, a big shout out to um, everyone who's kind of helped me along the way, uh, Evan Cassidy, our dude, the cast man, Evan Cassidy himself, for um, kind of we, we, we concocting the idea of a, of a podcast network and kind of pushing me um, and helping me edit a lot of the early episodes. Um, you know, so so gra- grateful and uh, happy to um, know know the cast man, great dude. Uh, also, uh, John Shevsky, Zach Hillman for doing the uh, theme park minutes th- this whole time. Uh, I want to give a big uh, thanks to uh, Brain from the Sheiks of Neptune for all the awesome artwork. Um, you know, Roscoe Soul Train for coming in and, and saving the show and uh, adding a lot to it. And uh, I'm really excited for what we're going to be doing with the show. And, uh, you know, this season finale break ain't going to be long at all. We'll be putting out uh, some some fun, interesting clip show stuff. And uh, we'll be back very soon with the season premiere of season two of Robert Land. So you all don't got to worry too much. Uh, but, you know, um, I also want to, you know, give a big thanks to Roy Ty for letting me record a lot of episodes in his studio at Thailand Studios and North Hollywood for all of the guests who've been on the show and the reoccurring guests that have been on the show. Uh, I am so grateful for you guys to have come on and, uh, you know, enjoyed my goofy doofy ass. And I don't know if you've enjoyed my goofy doofy ass, but just tolerating it and uh, playing along (laughs) and having fun. Uh, And, you know, it's it's been a blast, guys. I just don't know what else to, to say other than thank you. And, uh, you know, obviously Ryan D, uh, huge, huge part of me keeping the show going was him suggesting to do the video stuff and kind of just falling into um, the, the, the generous uh, heart of, of Ryan D. And uh, yeah, I, I, I miss him dearly and uh, I will take uh, all of the stuff that uh, we did uh, with me forever, and uh, you know he'll always be with us, even in this next chapter of Robert Land. Uh, but uh, love you guys, and we'll be riding them roller coasters and talking about poop and pee pee and caca very soon together. So love you all, and uh, thank you. all.
Just to keep answers me.